welcome back to the another tutorial and in this tutorial I'm gonna uh, talk uh, about the concept of understanding state management in Android application okay so imagine building a complex uh, building with many rooms okay so each room might have a different furniture decorations and maybe even secret passages okay but uh, to keep things organized you need a clear understanding of where everything comes from and who is responsible for each room and who can make changes okay so i will be providing you um, this concept of data flow and state management in android development okay so um, as i uh, 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 i was discussing about the previous example the the similar example also uh, 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 follows through the concept of this data flow okay so uh, this data flow has a similar concept of organizing and creating a uh, building with complex uh, uh, and many rooms okay so each rooms having different furniture decorations and maybe even a secret passages as i was discussing you guys right so um, um as um, i told you your app ha can have a different components like a room in the your building so uh, that need to work together but when uh, where does this start data come from actually okay so this is the big question uh, that uh, um, where this data come from is the source of the truth okay who controls the data for each UI element is the owner and who updates the data when uh, things uh, change uh, changes is an updater okay so uh, the state of confusion is uh, there why we need this pattern okay so traditional um, uh, actually there is a, a crucial question um, uh, answering uh, them uh, consistently um, like uh, 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 it's very tricky like uh, okay so who uh, uh, the, the the data flow and the state management how it is happening okay who owns the data uh, the source of truth okay uh, where the data comes from who controls the data the owner and who updates the data the updater okay so this uh, these crucial things are very difficult to answer okay because they are very tricky so but um, thankfully we have a architecture pattern that helps us to manage the data flow and state in your in our uh, android app okay so the state of um, uh, so uh, having this the state of a confu uh, confusion uh, obviously uh, we need a, uh, uh, a precise architecture pattern so that we can understand this uh, the data flow okay so in traditionally android uh, development can lead to a tangled mess of data flow okay uh, so uh, how okay so there we have a we can have a multiple source of truth like uh, data might be scattered across, uh, across different uh, places the activity fragments or even static variables so this makes it hard to track and maintain okay so you can have unclear ownership like who owns really the data so who is responsible for updating the data right like the specific piece of uh, uh, is very unclear okay so this can lead to potential bugs and also there is a difficulty in uh, updating the states okay so updating the ui when the underlying data changes can improve um, complex logic and code duplication so uh, obviously as i told you we we can have a different architectural pattern to rescue us okay so uh, and there are different architecture pattern like model view controller model view view model and model view presenter and model view intent okay so uh, each of them have their own specific purpose uh, their uh, benefits okay so uh, in the example here i will be um, just uh, discussing about uh, mvvm approach that is model view view model as you can see here this is a model view model and uh, uh, like this is the ui okay so uh, like the activity that is helping to um, update the uh, the view right so um so at this activity we will be using the view model as you can see here in this simpler example of a model view view model so uh, we have uh, as you can see here uh, a counter state uh, the data class that holds the counter value okay so we have a counter view model that stores the counter state in a mutable like data okay so and um, uh, we expose a immutable live uh, data 
as you can see here this is the immutable light data for the counter value the increment function um, uh, just increases uh, or updates the state and automatically notifies any observer okay uh, uh, that is observing so obviously the our observer is a counter activity so activity observes the counter live data uh, uh, and then uh, it uh, uh, it uh, this counter means this counter states it's observe it and then updates the counter text value okay so this is how it is happening so uh, whenever the user interacts with the button like it increments the button then uh, you have this uh, uh, when the user increments the button then uh, the uh, view will be updated obviously right because uh, there will be a uh, increment the view model is gonna increment the uh, counter state right so uh, uh, that's it guys so this is uh, uh, how uh, this code is gonna work and uh, obviously uh, the benefit of using MVVM is like uh, it has a clear separation of concerns as you can see is pretty much uh, clear right uh, with the separation of concern like the data logic in the view model uh, you have a data logic in the view model the activity focuses on UI updates here yeah, the activity is focusing on the UI updates right so you have a improved testability so it's easier to test uh, because you just need to only test the uh, view model right uh, like logic you can just easily test the, the logic here uh, that is inside the view model in isolation so it also it simplifies the UI update uh, live data automatically reflects state changes in the in the ui right so um, so this is pretty much a simplified example of uh, uh, how mvvm helps managing the data flow and state by clearly defining the source of the truth the source of the truth is our truth is our view model okay so this is the real source of truth so let me just comment here uh, and um, uh, okay let me just add it here guys uh, so view model is the real source of the truth uh, so it acts as a single point of reference for the current state of the ui okay so who owns the state the view model owns the state actually uh, the view model owns the states okay so it's responsible for that uh, for the data and exposing it to the view on the way that's suitable okay uh, often using the live data so um, uh, owner of the state okay and uh, who updates the state the view model typically updates the state based on the user interaction business logic or data from the so uh, 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 view model typically updates the state okay so based on the user interaction business logics like like you know whenever user interact you have this increment uh, method being uh, triggered right and it updates the data so, right uh, so uh, and the ui will be uh, updated okay so following these principles mvvm promotes a well structured and predictable data flow within your android apps so this makes it easier to uh, understand how data moves uh, from different components preventing data inconsistencies and simplifies the development progress so this is a very simple example for you guys to um, make you understand uh, but obviously you can have uh, uh, complex uh, applications and uh, the, the complex application will have a complex scenarios and cases and logics but uh, the overall um, uh, breakdown of the architecture is this okay so hope you like it guys and if you have any questions do please do comment and uh, uh, follow me subscribe me share it if you like it and thank you guys catch you up in the next lecture where i will be talking more about jetpack compose thank you guys